What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about Canada's car theft crisis. A crisis, I tell ya! Well, I gotta be honest, I had no idea that this was even a thing. Um, and in Canada, of all places. What a curveball. Um, but sure enough, when you Google this, it does say, according to the Insurance Bureau of Canada, auto theft is a national crisis in Canada. What? This is the absolute first time I am hearing about this. And it's a crisis. I mean, may maybe like us Americans are just so out of touch with what's happening in Canada. But like, what's some of the reasoning behind this is, I guess my first thought, like, Who's doing this? Who's stealing all the cars? Why? Where is this happening? How is this happening? I got a lot of questions. I'm, I'm alerted. <laughs> I'm scared. Um, let's, let's keep looking here. In 2022, more than 105,000 vehicles were stolen across Canada. Uh, I gotta be honest. I don't know how many vehicles are stolen across the United States. Um, but we certainly don't talk about it like it is a crisis here or anything. That's what I'm kind of alarmed about. Um, 100,000 vehicles every year in Canada? Really? I mean, Canada has like 38 million people? So what? One out of 380 people get their car stolen? One out of 380 Canadians get their car stolen every year? Like... <laughs> like many, many people watching this video are gonna get their car stolen? Like what? That That's disturbing. Um, statistically speaking, I'm, I, I'm not gonna go steal your car, I swear. I'm just talking about the stats, the data. I don't know for sure if your car is gonna get stolen, but uh, one out of 380 of you will get your car stolen. I'm sorry. But <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Uh, which is one vehicle stolen every five minutes? Okay, a vehicle has been stolen so far. One... At least one during this vi this video. Oh my god. Uh, 2022 also saw a 50% increase in vehicle theft rates across Quebec, 48.3% in Ontario, 34.5% in Atlantic Canada, even Atlantic Canada as well, where they seem extremely wholesome. 34% uh, rise in theft there as well. Rising car theft just in a lot of parts of Canada. So I have a little news report here that's going to talk a bit about this crisis and why it's happening and how it's happening. And I'm quite interested in this. So let's take a look. The car theft stories just get more shocking, but the problem isn't new. Our colleagues at Marketplace have investigated how easy it is to steal your car. What? And they fought for answers from the auto industry. But what? E what? It is? This is, this is stressing me out. I'm not even living in the crisis, but I'm getting stressed out by this. What do you mean how easy it is to steal your car? What? Buckle up, Charles C. Agro takes us on this next ride. Buckle up indeed. If it's a mystery why they're not doing more to prevent car thefts these days, an even bigger mystery back in 2016 is how cars are actually being stolen. How they're actually being stolen. Well, it's interesting they say, like, oh, why aren't they doing more to prevent car theft? That's true, but also, if you think about it another way, it's like, you, you should hope to live in, like, a society where you don't have to be concerned that the people living amongst you are going to steal your car, you know? That's the fundamental problem, right? Not, not really catching them. But, like, what's the root cause? Like, you, this is something in a civilized society, we'll say, that you, you hope that you don't even have to worry about. Not, and, and they're focusing on, like, oh, how do we catch them? But it, it might be, like, a deeper problem than that, right? Like, again, not something I ever really thought I would be talking about in regards to Canada, where I think crime rates in general are... A, lot better than here in the United States. But this is like specifically this car theft thing. The Long Beach Police Department is baffled by a series of high-tech auto thefts. Across what? North America, videos emerge showing thieves in the middle of the night. 
Okay. NBC5 has learned of a new way thieves are breaking into your cars. It is a crime catching on here in Winnipeg, and we have a video of A new way? Opening cars and driving off like they have their own keys. What? One guy. What? What is this? Oh man, this is gonna this is gonna just stress me out today. A new way of stealing cars, like they have a key. What are they at home making a copy of your key out of mud, like out of like a three D printer or something? What is this? He has something in his hand. Then he walks over to the Toyota, and bingo, it opens. The internet offers all kinds of theories and equipment, scanners and Holy. jammers. What? What is this? What is this? He attached a pen to a calculator and it opens your car but seriously all joking aside <laughs> like they have little gadgets to mimic your key to open your car and there's tutorial tutorials online where exactly are these tutorials about how to access people's cars just for you know scientific purposes of course but first <laughs> and amplifiers that interfere with the unlock code your key fob sends to your car but do they work? Marketplace heads to Los Angeles what? to see if a white hat hacker named Sammy can pop the locks on this Cadillac we rent. What? What is that? It's a proof of concept that I've created that demonstrates. Huh? Okay. What? I, I guess I shouldn't be shocked. Like, you you can buy a key, like legally, from for a car. You could like take it apart, figure out how it works trying to mimic it this guy like soldered circuit boards together and is going to open their car this is like scary stuff i didn't know existed i i wish i could go back to how naive i was before this video but but i can't so let's keep going demonstrate some of the insecurities with vehicles today uh it gives me the ability to unlock a car um when it really shouldn't be unlocking Sammy tells us cars are what? pretty much computers on wheels and very much vulnerable to attack. Okay. So we'll place a smaller version that basically just interferes with the signal on the vehicle. But can the device he built for 30 bucks really hack its way through the latest anti-theft features? Yeah. And this This is scary because like it's getting your car stolen before is like uh, traumatic enough you know they break your window or something they like have to break open your car and hotwire it or whatever or however they do it i wouldn't really know <laughs> um but this is like so sophisticated and you do it all from the outside of the car and that's kind of the disturbing part device this is what picks up the signal sammy uses his laptop to figure out the car's frequencies and program his invention Half an hour what? later, it's time to test. What? Hit unlock. Try a few times. Cool. So I'm basically taking I'm basically taking that signal. So now that signal is programmed in here. Oh, they have to they have this little beacon on your car. You have to unlock your car with your own key. Unbeknownst to you, they're like copying the signal you're sending to your car. And using that to open the car later, I think. I can disable this. And when I want, I can go up to the car and I can unlock it. What? So currently we see it's locked. Yep. Can't get in. And then <gasps> just using this. What? No. I want to go back to people breaking your car open with a baseball bat. That would be somehow better. At least you, like, the car alarm goes off. Or you know something's happening. You might hear it. It's more risky for the perpetrator. This is crazy. This is technologically advanced in the worst way. Um, is this where society is going? Apparently this, is this like the preferred method in Canada? Is this technology uh, growing? And is that why it's, like, becoming such a problem in Canada? Like, because this method makes it so, so much less risky, I guess, to try to steal a car. It's not just fancy new devices. We learn car thieves are also using tools meant for legitimate locksmiths. Right. Guys like Nick McKay, who agrees to show us how they work. Right. Your challenge, these keys are going to stay in my pockets. 
You gotta get in this car, get it going, get out of here. Nothing special to get into the car. The real- Oh my God, I've seen stuff like this. If you need a locksmith to open your car for some reason, because you lost the keys, they can wedge open the door and stick a big hook inside and unlock it this way. Right, so, I mean, this is, this takes, like, this is more obvious that someone's stealing your car, I guess. This is still bad, but it's a little more obvious. Still scary. The challenge, though, is to get it going. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. What is that? This is... Right. So, in both instances, they can open the car. How do they move it? How do they get it started, though? Huh. This is the MVV Pro. It's a key programmer. Okay. This key programmer allows Nick to talk to the car's computer. So what? I've got the keys, Nick. What are you gonna do? Well, I have a unprogrammed key. What? Same thing. As you can see, it doesn't work the car at all. Okay. Um, I'm gonna basically tell the car to accept this as a new key. He plugs the programmer okay. into the car's diagnostic port, finds the right make and model, what? and resets the car's immobilizer. Oh my God, okay. I didn't know, I didn't know there was stuff like this. This is supposed to be used for good, for the purposes of good, and now it's evil. Um, I guess bad guys can get their hands on these devices that are built on purpose to work with the car to copy a new key usually if you are trying to get help, but it's also the perfect tool for a car thief. Wow, it's all starting to make sense. I never knew all this whole underground uh, information about the car theft, what? The immobilizer is what stops anyone from just coming in with any key, starting it up and going away. So I'm gonna put this key up there, you're gonna hear a little chirp, and this key's tied to it. And there we go. Just oh, you know, they are they have one of these fancy new cars with the push ignition. It's just a button. You don't even put a physical key in the car and turn it uh, to start the ignition. This is like one of those fancy pants buttons. Maybe that's a little maybe that's a little riskier to own. Maybe that's easier to hack in a way. Just like that. That's it. Yep. Key programmed. Yep. And you can start this car? Absolutely. All right, prove it. Get out of here. Nick's key programmer costs <laughs> there thousands. There he goes. But we find plenty of cheaper ones online. And you can just, you can just buy this stuff online. I'm, I don't even know, like, this is supposed to be a news report. Is this just like creating lots of more car thieves who are like, wait a minute. I didn't know I could do this. Cool. Like, oh no. And now I'm aiding in the car thievery spreading of information, but... It's too late now, I think. Um, the crisis is already there, all joking aside. So uh, this, this is real fascinating, actually. Let's keep looking. You still can. However they're doing it, car thefts are soaring by 2022, when Marketplace uncovers startling evidence of where some of these stolen vehicles are ending up. They're pushing, they're just, <laughs> they're just pushing the car down the road. They're pushing it away. You wake up and your car is gone. Someone pushed it down the road. Yeah, okay, so they're gonna talk about where the cars go? Holy cow. Our investigation takes us to West Africa. To West car Africa. lots and gas stations in the Nigerian city of Lagos. When did this one came to Nigeria? It came in December, December 4th. I, I, I saw a news article in one of the Canadian news videos I did. Um, about someone's car being stolen, I just remembered. And being sold to like somewhere in Africa or, or the Middle East or something. Um, and I thought that was just the craziest story. I thought that was like a one-off crazy story. Yeah, the guy had his car stolen twice, I remember now. I thought that was a one-off. And now, you know, watching this, I realize that's, that was related to this crisis of car theft in Canada. I didn't realize that. 4th of December, uh, two months ago? Yes. Our undercover researchers check vehicle identification numbers, run wow. them through a website that lets you search for cars reported stolen, and we find many. This Honda is both made in and boosted from Canada. Check out the sticker from a... D so this, there's just this random place in Africa they sell the cars to. 
And the, the you know, credit to the reporters. They actually went there and started looking up the VIN numbers to see that they were stolen Canadian cars. Dealership in Montreal. Wow. And can there be any doubt about this Lexus still wearing its Ontario license plate? Wow. A quick search confirms the crime. Back home, it hits home for people like Natalie Cara. Take me through it. Like, when did all of this happen? That was a Thursday night overnight. Both my son and I were sleeping. We're watching her 2020 Man. Lexus being stolen from her driveway. Every day you can read. Oh, she has a uh, security footage of her car being stolen. Oh, how how violating, you know, that must feel. Somebody somewhere got their car stolen. And sometimes you hear like three or four cars a night. Yeah. And I'm like, this is not a joke what's happening. How come it's so easy? Here's yeah. how easy. Yeah. Natalie's car is stolen two more times after that. When that last story airs back in 2022. What? Her car was stolen three times. I mean, it's just absurd. It's absurd. At that point, it's like, park your car. Well, for one thing, I think she could park it in her garage or like, <laughs> you know, after the second time, it's like, what can you even do at that point? Automakers agree car thefts affect all brands and say they're working on it. But since okay. then, car thefts have reached new highs and criminals have even more methods available to them. Oh, Marketplace boy. will continue to push automakers and governments to hit the brakes on stolen cars. So they're hoping car manufacturers can implement like what? Software and stuff into the cars that resist these specific types of hacking and theft, I guess. And automakers will be in Ottawa tomorrow when that national summit on car theft gets going. There Nash There's a national summit on car theft in Canada happening. I mean, that's how you know this is not a joke. Like, a national summit on car theft. I've never imagined the phrase. We're bound to face pressure to make vehicles harder to steal and easier to track. Yeah, right. Canada's car theft crisis continues. How to stop a thief. Oh. So the more that you can do... How to, to, how to stop a thief. You get out your hockey stick and you show them exactly how powerful your slap shot is. That's how you stop a car thief right here. I'm, I'm curious what their uh, recommendation is, though. Get more difficult on them and add more time is, is a great solution. What works, what really doesn't. Can you give us four tangible things people could do? Okay. Yeah, absolutely, you can use a Faraday pouch. Here's an example of one. This one's from York Regional Police. And uh, you simply put your key fob in it, close it, make sure it's properly closed, and that prevents that uh, radio frequency from emitting using a steer. Oh, whoa, that's cool. Gosh, you hate to have to make that part of your daily routine. Is that really what it's come to? Maybe. Um, if, if you're worried enough, you can put your keys in this pouch to block the... I mean, it's a, it's crazy that that's the time we live in. Put your keys in this pouch to stop the f theft frequencies from intercepting your key signal and copying how to get into your car. That's crazy. Steering wheel lock, just a visual. Something that, uh, it's, a, it's another barrier that the thief have to, has to over... Oh, a steering wheel lock. Oh, I mean, again, that's sad, honestly, if you got to put a steering wheel lock on your car. But if your car, some of these people have their car stolen like two or three times. They're clearly being targeted. Like, that's when you really do have to consider the steering wheel lock or maybe hiding out behind your car and popping up at 3 a.m. and saying hello. Ever come? Uh, and then uh, aftermarket immobilizer is another effective means, okay. as well as an onboard diagnostic port lock, uh, so that uh, prevents them from plugging in and doing a reprogrammed theft. So, wow, right. So these are countermeasures to like the technologically advanced methods that we learned about here today. There's ways to counter that. Okay. Not one of those is going to be sufficient on itself. That's why we call it a layered approach. But uh, really protecting against relay attacks and reprogramming attacks are significant uh, advantages for you as an owner of a vehicle. 
Wow. Okay. Man, this has been quite interesting, I gotta say. Um, really good stuff here. This is by CBC News, The National. I gotta give this a like. There's a lot of good information here. But I, again, I gotta say, um, this one really shocked me, reading about this topic. Car theft crisis in Canada. Um, I guess I kind of learned from this video one of the reasons car theft has increased in Canada and probably everywhere by the sound of it is that the methods of breaking into your car have gotten a lot more sophisticated than I ever imagined. Um, really. But still, uh, this is actually a, a bit of a sad story to hear about Canada. Um, and it definitely got my blood pressure up a little bit just <laughs> learning about these types of horrors in the world and our society. But uh, I think it's good to be educated on this and aware of it. So for that reason, I, I enjoyed this. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on car theft in Canada if it's affected you. If you've heard about this, that'd be great to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.